Hey, Father, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. So, what story are we getting into today? Ooh, exciting. Okay, call back later. <gasps> you guys, this week, we're talking all about the differences between arrogance and confidence. Welcome to another episode of Bible <laughs> Stories with me, Brianda. Brianda. And again, joining me, another week, another day, another dollar, my work wife, my little Spanish croquettes, my little Spanish fixin, la clarita. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, you're making those introductions longer and longer every time. I love it. I never know what to switch again. I'm like, uh, <laughs> you never know when to switch. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, I love it. I'm keeping you on your Spanish toes, kid. <laughs> And today is an exciting episode. I was going to say, I'll give you, there's three reasons for an exciting episode. Pick one. Okay. Okay. I pick door number one. Door number one is... It's our 50th episode. Well, Yay! it's your 50th episode. Um, Mine 30 you. something. Oh, that's right. That's right. But no, because you you married into this, so you're grandfathered in. It's our 50th it's episode. It's our 50th episode. Oh my God, major. Okay, wait. Now I want door number two. Door number two. Don't flip me off, uh, bitch. What? You were like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. She's like, yeah, please. Not in front of Jesus, please. <laughs> Go point that another way. Okay. What's Door the number two. What's the second thing? Look at your earrings. <gasps> ah, ah. What is it? This week is the week of love. Ooh, la la. Ooh, happy Valentine's Day, babe. Happy Valentine's. I mean, technically, when they hear this, it's not Valentine's Day, but... Valentine's it, week. It's Valentine's week. I mean, commercially, we know all of, every CVS is just like vomiting <laughs> paper heart, paper mache hearts and crap. But like the next day, everything's going to be half off. Uh, okay, wait. Oh, what's the third thing? Oh. The, oh, dirt. Oh, I already know what it the is. The third is the most special of them all. Uh, I beg to differ. It's my baby birthday. Ah, it's my birthday. <laughs> Hi, guys. It's also my birthday. <laughs> wow. I, I feel like the listeners are stressed. There are a lot of things happening. There's a lot of things, yeah. Too many stimulants at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's my birthday, and I'm... <sighs> I'm turning 20 fine. Um, <laughs> 20 fine? 20 fine, I mean, yes. you are fine. Thank you. Yes, I, yes, yes. It's my last year in my 20s. 29. That's right. Wow, 29. 29's a big one. It's the big departure. What do you mean the big departure? I mean, saying, no. saying goodbye to the... No, 30s of the new 20s. You're just starting over again. You're good. What was your 29 like? Like, do you remember when you turned 29? Any other? Yeah, I do remember. It was late, actually. No, I remember What'd now. you do for your 29th? <laughs> my best friend came from, so my, you know, my best friend, she used to live in, in London. Mm -hmm. But um, we used to like travel back and forth all the time to see each other. And she came for my birthday. And I'm pretty sure it was my 29th. Yeah. I was seeing somebody at the time that also was from outside the city. Mm -hmm. He also flew in. And then all my friends from Barcelona and those two, we went to like a beach town outside the city and we did some water sports like jet skis Ooh. and like the, oh, the crazy bananas and stuff. stuff. Yeah, I love that shit. And then at night we had dinner at one of my friends' house, which is something that we always used to do. Like, random dinners like we all mm -hmm. had like we all lived by ourselves so we just like pick a different spot every time and then we just went to like the club where we always went to like vip section and everything but clara and then what did the it next feel day, like to turn 29 it didn't feel like anything just oh like yeah any, come like on clara. any other birthday really yeah oh i'm like i was actually emotional. looking forward to turn 30 to be honest me too <laughs> I am. I do. I do. I'm ready to get there. Everyone always says that like their 30s are kind of like their 20s, but with more stability. 
both emotionally, I'm financially. You, the 30s are the new 20s. Mm. Think about it. Our parents' generation, most for, for the most part, by their 20s, they already had to like start, you know, having their stable job, children. Like that was the norm society in society, you know, like como ya un mami, mm -hmm. un daddy, that's it. Our generation, we're now just finishing our whatever you studied, whatever career you mm -hmm. started, whatever. We're just now starting to move out and, and being fully independent, being in serious relationships and, and, and mm -hmm. getting married and having children. It's a new Do You know what I wish we'd normalize? I wish we would normalize how many people in their late 20s are still living at home. Oh. It's so much smarter to, you're saving money 100%. after the scam that was universities, at least in America, it was the biggest scam of the planet. Half these jobs don't require degrees. Half these people aren't even utilizing the degrees that they got. You know what I'm saying? It was, the, it was such a huge scam. And yet we have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars back. Like for what? Why? Yeah, uh, what a scam. Uh, so I feel like we, and we don't hear people talking about that enough. We always hear about the 21 year old who bought a house and all this other stuff when like there are so many late mid to late 20s kids in my generation millennials and i'm sure that gen, I mean, it's, it's happening to the gen z's too it's approaching you know so many of them are still living at home or like they still have roommates and that's also dope too and honestly probably going to be more of the norm moving forward yeah and i'm just like there's no rush like i get it like get outside your parents house can be and a, 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 a huge, feat. you know, like yeah. yeah, like a need at some point. But there's no rush to live by yourself. There's no rush to like get some roommates, have some fun, Save. be responsible Yikes. for a while. It pizza for a whole week straight. Mm -hmm. Just do that. Get it out of the way. Mm -hmm. It'll pay off. Yeah, it'll, it'll pay off. There's no need to like start overpaying for apartments just to. Have your independent dot that, com. Like you have to do this this I crazy know. and stupid shit. Too. I know. Gosh, and, and looking back, if I were to, I wish I would have told. Like, I, oh man, I wish I would have known in my early twenties what I know now. Like, of course, I would have told her to just like forget what everyone else is doing. Mm. Forget what everyone else is doing, and I would have told my twenty year old self. No one's thinking about you as much as you think they are. Everyone Ooh. is thinking about themselves. 100%. You know? Oh, I wish I would have really understood that. Like, mm. no one, no, you might as well focus on yourself and not what other people perceive of you because they're also not perceiving you. They're like busy doing their own things and mm. worrying about their own stressors and their own relationships. They don't even see you and that's not because you're invisible. It's because they're so worried about their things and people seeing them that mm. they just, you're like too far ahead from, uh, their, from their side. Yeah, man. And okay, well, we bring this up because it's my birthday and... I've never had like a pop and program. I mean, I had a pop and program. Shout out Super Trip, but I mean, like, not of this. You know, my H <laughs> HD cameras, honey. I mean, look at me, look at me. You know, the the price has gone up, honey. Um, but no, I've never, I haven't had this platform, and like, I'm just coming off of a Zoom, like, with my Patreon. And go, join, please join the Patreon, uh, Patreon.com forward slash Bible Brianda, where we have a Zoom every month, and just like. I'm seeing the fruits of our labors and the relationships that we're making. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm seeing some of the Bible babes like talk to one another outside of me being there. They're just like developing relationships. Like yeah. Delisha and Jordan both live in Ontario, Canada. And they like, I saw them on the Patreon, like chatting about it. That was really that's sweet. So cool. It's cool. So that's what I mean by pop in. And I was going to say for you and I both, Clara, because this is our baby and Anytime, you know, someone reposts, shares, likes something, that's a win for us. Mm. And I was thinking, what better, this is, there's only one day a year where I would do this and it's today. <laughs> like if you guys want to get a tithe <laughs> or give me a present, give us a present, give the brand a present, right? If, especially if you've been watching for several weeks and we have like a relationship now, you and I, you know what I'm saying? Car Which one's my camera? Which one's my camera? Here. You know, we have a relationship, you and I, you know what I'm saying? And maybe you want to say happy birthday to me and, and um, feed me and my work wife, Clara. I don't know if you want to join the Patreon for the month of February. 
Maybe that would be the best. I mean, not the best. It would be a an idea of like a little a little sprinkle of something that would make me really happy and mm. and it would also give us the resources to do more research. Like I want to buy a bunch of different study books so that I can elevate the program. That costs money, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, also, I want to be able to like get different programs for Clara and I to edit and stuff. Which the reason why the show's so dope, that's not cheap, you know what I'm saying? Uh, mm. And we want to continue to grow and stuff. So it, I don't know. It, is, is this awkward? No, I don't think so. I just like, it really, truly is. You don't know, like, you don't know how many people have reached out to me asking, hey, I want to, I want to like give Brenda something for her birthday, but I don't know, like, give me any ideas. Oh, gosh. And I was thinking and thinking, I was like, you know, like, you, you like your, like your looks and stuff, but you're not a material girl like that. So it's like really hard when people are not materialistic, it's really hard to give them a, a birthday gift because it's like, I'm thinking, and in my head, I'm like, she just want a husband and this show to grow. Mm -hmm. So I can't get you a husband for your birthday because, you know, <laughs> that would be could. awkward. <laughs> and, like, really, this show is, like, your little baby. And you have put, and you put every day almost all of your time and effort to create these. And so I really don't think of anything that would make you happier than seeing this baby grow. 100%. Yeah, that would be the best gift. Like, if y'all could like share, share a couple episodes, your favorite episodes with. Yeah, like, and it doesn't two even people. have to be money. Like, right? Sign, like signing the Patreon, of course, we would love it, and you know, appreciate be, it. Yeah, like sharing. But like, yeah, share one of the videos with your best friend, and and like reach out to someone that you think they would like this show, and 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 connect them to this, you know, to this show. Yeah, and that's the best way to grow. We want to build a community. I don't want to, I don't care about being an influencer. I've never, I, and I think that's why the proof is in the pudding. I think that's why it reads, you know what I'm saying? Like people read that, like I, I don't care about that. I really do, I'm in it for this community and this community building. Mm. And I want to be able to say that like, anyone who comes right now is here at the beginning. Like I, whether it was at 6,000 or 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, you're here in the beginning. We're all here in the beginning. Mm. I want to be able to all say that we built this together and that ooh, we're going to be able to build so many other like tentacles off of Bible stories because of that, dude, it'd be the mm. best birthday present ever. That's all I want. Also having access to Patreon also helps um, the, the listeners be more... Um more a part of this, right? Because they get to vote things. They get to vote what That's they want right. to see, what they want to hear, what they want to talk about. They mm -hmm. get to participate on the, the on Zoom. The, Zoom the end of the month Zoom, this last one, month for January was amazing. Mm. I, they were like- And it we was doubled the, up the numbers, right? There were more people there than ever th this last one. It was mm -hmm. so exciting. I was thinking like, what are we going to do when we hit 50? We're going to have to have two different Zooms. Or something, because I can't, I'm an introvert, and I think digitally I'm also an introvert. I can't handle, like, too many people talking at the same time. I just can't do it. I can't do it. Can't do it. Um, uh, so, anywho, if you guys want, um, yeah, there's that. There's something else to say. I'm really awkward with birthdays. I, I don't celebrate them. I have all my little, my closest friends keep texting me, like, what are we doing? What are you going to do? And I always say, I don't do anything. I typically I'll stay home. I don't, I don't do anything. Like, you were saying that, I'm like... I could just stay home in my robe with my cat. But melancholy. what's the need? Like, we do go out on a Tuesday okay. night eventually. Like, okay. It's not... I think you're, you, the idea of making the day special is what makes you feel awkward. Yeah. But we go out on a Tuesday night. Why can't we go on a, out on a Thursday night? The fuck? Oh, yeah. sorry. You with the swearing, I'm trying to change. Sorry. But if you're a Christian person and you live in New York, please come hang out with me. I need more Christian friends. That too. <laughs> <laughs> Claire needs more Christian friends too. <laughs> um, well, uh, we can move on from this topic. And unfortunately, the next topic outside of my birthday is uh, not as fun, not as exciting. I suck with transitions, but it's it applies though. <clears throat> there was an, an essay that I read, mm -hmm. I think last year by a woman. Her name is uh, Chesley Christ. And 
she wrote an article for Allure magazine about turning 30. Uh, and it was, it was a beautiful essay. And I remember reading it and I was 26 or 27 at the time when I read it. And that's how I started following up on this girl. She was so dope. She was a, a beautiful pageant woman. She won Miss USA 2019. Mm. She was the old, she was, oh my gosh, I have to use different, uh, tense. Uh, yeah, different right. tenses. Um, she was the oldest woman to win Miss USA at 28. Mm. She wow. not only had a degree in business, she had a master's and she was a lawyer. She got her master's and her law degree what? at the same time, at the same time. She worked immediately following uh, law school. She worked for free for like the first year, helping lo lo lower the sentences of inmates in prison for drug offenses. She, and she was stunningly beautiful and smart and clever and just a vision. You, it, 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 it's insane. I don't even take to people. I don't, like I said, I don't want to be an influencer. I also don't take to influencers. The only influencer mm -hmm. I have right now is Jesus Christ and Dolly Parton. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like in that, not in that order, Dolly's way, way after obviously Jesus first. I, and oh, I mean no. that I'm being, just, this is. Every time you say Dolly Parton, it's just so funny. Anywho, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you do take it so seriously. I do. To me. I, just... I do. But I take Christ more seriously. I, I know you do. Yeah. I have to I mean, say you have that. a whole show. This is true. I would have another show him. for Dolly. Maybe that'll be my spinoff. <laughs> The Bible and Dolly. <laughs> wait, 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 no, I'm trying to be serious. Sing You're the Bible. It. Sing the Bible. Go ahead, I'm trying to be serious. Okay, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is actually serious. Talk, Lord, someone. <laughs> okay. Anywho, this woman, Chesley Christ, she, the week that we're recording this, um, this past weekend, she uh, died by suicide. Mm. She, and like I, like I had just finished buying some curl products because she just started her YouTube eight days ago. Pah. She just launched her YouTube and I watched every single video because I was looking for a new, that's why my hair is a little more defined now because I literally ordered the products that she told us or t told me, I say us because I was a fan. And when I tell you, and I saw the tweet of it, I couldn't believe it. It was like, what? I want to use this time to talk about it a little bit because if you're a loyal Bible babe, you know that I've talked about trigger warning. I should have said trigger warning before. Sorry, you guys, please skip five minutes if this is uncomfortable for you. Uh, I, su suicide, I mentioned, anytime someone asks me how I came to Christ, because it's my story, it, that's my testimony, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like it would be irresponsible of me not to mention when something has kind of shaken me up. I think it would be fake, it wouldn't be real, because it's on my mind right now. And it's been on my mind the last couple of days, I haven't been able to sleep because of it. S I would have never, and this is, so many people have this to say about her, would have never guessed that. There are some people being conspiratorial, which I don't think is appropriate right now for the family, like people being like, there's no way, they need to do a thorough investigation. The girl left a suicide note. She, her last post three hours before she was found, she posted on Instagram this photo of herself and the caption said, uh, May may you rest in peace, something Ooh. like that. Very eerie, you know? This was something that was, it's seeming like it was deliberate, you know? And at first I felt angry because, uh, and I didn't know this person, but I felt like I did. So I felt angry that she didn't let us know. She was so transparent in so many other ways and she didn't let us know. And I feel angry at me too, because one, I left a comment on one of her TikToks back in October. She did a, a closet tour. She seemingly on paper had the perfect life. And she has this closet, wait, Clara, this closet that like I dream about. And I, on the comment I left, there are people commenting at me be, from that, at that comment today. Uh, I said, oh, I wish I had your life. 
is what I commented. Ooh. This is what I'm saying. This is why it's really affecting me right now. You just never know the trials that people are experiencing. It doesn't matter how beautiful they are. It doesn't matter the accolades, the degrees, the pageant titles, the successes, the relationships. You could be a parent, you know, you could be, it doesn't matter. Depression doesn't care. Cause I've noticed that no one will ever really, like even the professionals that are trained for crisis prevention, unless you've done it, attempted it or thought about it, or you never really know what that suffering feels like. So every single time it's being discussed, there's always this like urge I have to like, oh, but that's not what it means. That's not, because. But also be careful with that because it may not be what it means to you. Like it may be one of these things where there's a common dem denominator, but every person has their own experience. Yes, that's true. That's true. That's all, that's up Which 1,000% percent. It's fucked up because it makes it even harder yes. for the people that are trying to help. It help. really, it's like the most, it's like a malignant cancer that is so, that, that some doctors, you know, that there are some cancers that some doctors, even the best world renowned doctors have no answers for. That's kind of what it is. Cause it is so s specific to the person. And some, my, my mom was saying, how did someone, my mom, and my mom is someone who, again, she's from another different generation, doesn't believe that mental illness is uh, as okay. serious as we make it out to be. You know, that's her thing. We're working on it. Uh, but she was saying, how was it that there, no one noticed? How was it that, it's like, you have to understand when people are in a state of suffering that way and high achieving like her, she also had the, she had like, you know, she was high achieving, mm -hmm. extraordinarily high achieving. They're masters at hiding it. And not only that, also some people, they just don't want to see it. Because to me, of course, it you I probably wouldn't catch it at the moment. Not probably, definitely wouldn't catch it at the moment. But now, now looking back, someone who's trying to keep their mind so busy all the time, you know how much free time do you have to have having a whole fucking public life or, you know, influencer or whatever section, doing a law school, masters, yeah. pageant, beauty pageant, like you barely have any free time. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, my condolences to the family. That's the thing that also, it affects the whole family, you know, Ooh, what they could possibly be going through. Like, please Bible babes, let's shoot a prayer out to the the Christ family right now. I know this topic is tough, Bible babes. Thank you for allowing us the space to even discuss it. It's important for for me to talk about the tough things, you know. Uh, I know that this is especially difficult uh, for some more than others. If you or someone you know is exhibiting, you know, reclusiveness or you've noticed a change in their behavior that, I don't know, you've just clocked. Say something, say something. It's gonna take, it's gonna take the people around us, I find, to spark these conversations and potentially save a life. So say something and be explicit with it. I think that's the best way to go about it. But I'll also add um, that if you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, and again, if you know someone who might be, this is where you could get some help. You could uh, reach out to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and their telephone number is 1-800-273-TALK or 1-800-273-8255. It's obviously a US number, sorry for my international babes. Uh, you could also text TALK to 741-741. You know, they're available 24 hours a day. Um, for more information, visit www.suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Okay? Rest in peace to Chesley.
I actually have a question for you. All right. Because I, I always see, um, you know, people promoting, the, like you just did, you know, like the helplines and stuff. As someone that has dealt with depression or suicidal thoughts, is that something you would do? No. That's why I said it really is for the other people. It, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Mm -mm. Hmm. Because that's what I thought. But that's also me, right? Like my, my I don't know, I've. I don't, I feel like I've had suicidal ideation for a really long time and it's almost so ingrained in me that it feels like if I'm in a state of suffering, it's too late. I'm not using that. The only time that it would work would be like, it's a, it's a, it's a, how can I say this? It's a, it's a disease that really does affect and cloud your judgment. Mm. Like you're not thinking about anything else other than terminating the suffering. Like that's the best expression in the, this psych, oh man, I, I, I'll, I'll link it below guys, but the best analogy for it is when you're in the thick of it, when you're in that quicksand, it's like you're in a fire, in a burning building. When you're in the burning building, you're not thinking about lifelines. You're not thinking about mom. You're not thinking about your sister. You're not thinking about your daughter. You're not thinking about your friends. You're thinking about getting as far away from the fire as possible. So leaving the fire ends the suffering. That's what I'm going to do. You're, mm. it's, there's no... Like, I, I was thinking I can see... I wouldn't. A drug addict going to or calling to a helpline before I could see a person that suffers from depression or suicidal thoughts calling one of these like helplines. And like I said before, like that's just me and that also may not be true. Like mm. maybe I would. I also am a Christian now. It's different. Even dealing with my, my own little, I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't had a bad one since surrendering my life to Christ. I'm not going to say like I haven't had my throes of mania. I was just diagnosed with bipolar last month, you know, or two months ago. Like, mm -hmm. but since giving my life to Christ, I now feel, I now know I'm, my life is a, is a gift. Say it. Don't yeah, stop yourself. I know, oh. I know, I know. I know that my life is a gift and I'm, it's like, it feels like I'm so far removed from that, but like, it feels so comforting to know that I have that Pokemon card to just throw whenever I'm in an emergency and it works. It's, it works. Like I can't explain it. If I sound, I don't know who wants to, if this sounds brujeria don't for some, about, I don't, don't care, care but it works and it saved my life and I know it can save other people. A relationship with God saves us all. And I'm telling you, it saved me. It saved me. And I don't, I don't know how crass this is going to sound, but the devil got one this last weekend. The devil won one. Like, and she was a believer in God. Her, her caption said, said it, but, um, Maybe she was in a season where the intimacy wasn't there. It's the only way that makes sense. But there are a lot of cases of pastors taking their lives and a lot of, you know what I'm saying? The disease, what I was saying, the disease doesn't care. But when, you, when you're, I don't know, man. I don't have the answers. I don't know what to say. I don't know. All I know is that since I've surrendered my life to Christ, since I've been delivered, I don't have those thoughts anymore. And that's real. I'm not a spokesperson for anything, clearly. I swear I'm not wearing a bra right now. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't have anything to sell. I, it's just, it is what it is. I have something to live for now. I have someone that knows me and sees me so intimately. I tell Jesus everything. Jesus is my lawyer to God. He's my middleman to mm -hmm. God. That's my, that's that the son is someone that I look as the ultimate form of perfection. I want to make him proud. I want to mimic him. He's like my big brother. Like, I know that those thoughts would disappoint him. 
I don't want to disappoint him. Disappointing him is more suffering than the suffering that depression brings me. The thought of Jesus being disappointed in me is more harrowing than ending my life, than the thoughts of wanting to. Wow. You know? Wow. And that's true. Yeah. The real lifeline is Jesus. I said it. Yeah, I said it. I know a lot of people are going to have issues with that, but I don't oh. care, unfortunately, yeah. about what other people say. I only care about what one essence has to say about me. And, um, and I will say, even though I don't think I would have used the, li the, 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 the national prevention, uh, the crisis prevention hotlines, there are others as well that really work for some people. I've volunteered at a hotline before. Mm. Like they, 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 they do get calls. You know, and they know, do I'm work. Sure they, they do work do. for some people. And even if it, even if it takes one, like one moment of having someone distract you or something, that's a win. That's enough. So, a, com a combination of both, like a relationship with God, a relationship that fulfills you, something, anything, in tandem with these resources, that's the, that's gold. Hmm. That's gold. Oh man. I'm getting a hive. <laughs> okay, that's, I'm getting that's, a hive, but it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough, uncomfortable conversation to have, and it breaks my heart because life is such a gift. Life with Christ is so joyous. It gives me something to live for. I have so you guys, and also none of what you see is actually real. Like I'm wearing lashes, and it looks cute, and it looks pretty. Like my life right now is not that great. Right now, specifically, I don't want to sound like a bummer or whatever, but I have a feeling that I'm not alone with other personalities here. We don't know what people are going through. It's not as cute as it seems. It's an uphill climb for a lot of us. I mean, we just had a clear example, right? Someone that had bigger cloud, bigger, I don't know, like career, bigger whatever. And still. You want to, uh, what I'll add, and maybe we'll, we'll cut a lot of this out, whatever, but something I'll add is when you're, when, if you're, if you're a, a, someone on the outside, someone who has never, I come across so many people who've never had the thoughts before. My mom, my mom's literally like, Brianda en mi vida, en mi vida. It's me. never been something you, baby, am and you. <laughs> um, okay, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if you if you see if you even have an inkling, right now with these phones and stuff, these gadgets, our processing for boredom is no longer what it used to be, which was more active. More these things that pat the death scroll, doom scrolling is what you call them. They're real. So if you if you're you have predisposed to mania, depression, any other undiagnosed bipolar, whatever you whatever have it, and you're using these things to pass the time, I have a feeling there's a correlation to this because the awareness of suicide has gone up and yet the numbers are, are raising, they're not lessening. What's the explanation? The advancements in technology. You know, we're in the desperate need for redemption for humanity and it's evident. We need a redemption. There's something, something's gotta change. Something's gotta change. And if you, if you, really, if you feel like someone has been tweeting some dark stuff or, They've gone off, they've fallen off the grid. They ha you haven't been hearing about them. They're more reclusive. You're noticing that they're not bathing or you're noticing some changes. Their eyes are sunken. Pull them aside. And I'm, I, I really wanna, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a professional. I'm an amateur, you know? But I'm someone who has, has it, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, you know what I'm saying? A history of it. Pull them aside and ask them, ask them, hey, are you, have you ever, are you currently, you know, experiencing thoughts of suicide at all? Like from time to time, just say it. Don't beat around the bush. Say it, say it. If you catch the devil off guard, you'll catch something and then you press. And if, if, if they get defensive, if they're ever, hey man, you're, you're coming from a place of love and care at the end of the day. You know, and who knows, maybe that little press could give them a day or two, you know what I'm saying? Or another week or a month, you know? Or maybe it'll catch them off guard so much that one day they can be like, hey man, actually I am going through a hard time. No. That's all I got, that's the only advice I can say. Be specific, be in there, say it. Don't beat around the bush, just say it. 
Yeah, I was going to say, thinking, like, hearing you talk and all of that, I was just thinking, don't try to make them comfortable. Yeah, no. Don't look out for them. Because if they're lying about not being happy, don't, oh, let's not put it on the spot. Let's not do that because it's going to feel like you need, they need to get out of that mm -hmm. and get out of the comfort zone. If they say, no, 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 I want to stay home. I want to stay, show up. Go there. All right, that's it. We're going out for your birthday. Oh, gosh. Boom. No, no. I already said to you that I would go, Claire. That's it. Ugh. My poor, can we bring my cat? 100%. To the restaurant? Yep. Um, anyhow, this is so dark. Let's get into the story. Yep. This week, we are diving back into the book of Second Kings, chapter 15. And we're also going to splice in Second Chronicles chapter 26. I repeat, guys, the reason why I do this, I know it may be confusing for some, but the reason why I do this is because they tell the same story from a different POV. Two different prophets wrote the books. I had someone recently type in or write in to us saying that, Brie, I wish you would do like stories that you like, like the like the more popular stories, stories that you feel confident in, and then just like sum it up and then maybe sprinkle in some scripture. And I said, that's really fun. It's really exciting that you think that way and that you've pitched that idea. You know, I, I love that the Bible babes want to, you know, tailor make the show to their liking. But unfortunately, that's not what I started out doing. I want to finish this podcast show, which we know is going to see an end somewhere around 2023. Uh, uh, the way I started it, which was dissecting the Bible and reading the Bible in chronological order, more specifically in the chronological order in which it was written. So if you are confused by it, some episodes, there are a number of reasons. I'll take part accountability. Uh, I think sometimes I bite off more than I can chew. And sometimes my points are a little unclear. I'll take some percentage of that. But another percentage is you're not reading the Bible as well. You're just watching me. I think that the best way to consume Bible stories with Brianda is to read the Bible and the Bible, the chapters and the verses that we discuss. Every week, the book that we're dissecting is going to be found in the description box of the podcast if you're an audio listener or the YouTube if you're a YouTube watcher. Just FYI, okay? So this week, specifically is the best example as to why I do where we're doing Kings and Chronicles at the same time. And now we're going to dive in with a little bit of a recap, which I'm going to keep short because you could just watch the episode. Okay. You could watch episode 47 to get a recap of what we're going to discuss today. So where we left off is King Amaziah in Judah has just died at the hands of Joash in the north. Remember the whole thing about uh, uh, Amaziah hired 100,000 soldiers and then he canceled them. He was like, actually, never mind. I changed my mind because the man of God told me not to, blah, 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 blah. And then they left. And then they got pissed because they had their time wasted. And then they went back to Judah and killed 3,000 people. But the reason why they wanted the, the 100,000 people was so that they could fight the Edomites. And then they fought the Edomites. And then the Lord actually gave Judah a victory. So Amaziah got really cocky. I love how I said I wasn't going to do a rundown, but I am. So then Amaziah got really, really cocky and sent <laughs> Joash a letter being like, hey, yo, let's meet up. And then he was like, are you trying to fight me? And then he thought he was going to fight him. So Israel was bigger, larger, stronger, more evil, more evil. You already know this. And so they end up taking King Amaziah captive. And then Amaziah escapes, and then they find him, and then they kill him. <laughs> Copy? You may breathe now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. after Amaziah died, his son, Azariah, takes the throne in the southern kingdom of Judah. And then when Joash died, his son, Jeroboam the second, JJ the second takes mm -hmm. the, the kingdom up in the north. Capish? Capish. In these specific chapters, we find out that JJ the second dies and his son Zechariah takes over in the northern kingdom of Israel. But most of this episode is going to be telling the story of King Azariah, like we said, King Amaziah's son. 
In these readings, he has two names. It's, I, it's another one of those things. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry about it. So in 2 Kings, Azariah is known as Azariah. And in Chronicles, he's known as Uzziah. You're probably wondering why. Why do they have two different names? Uh, that's a good question. But I did some research. And they mean different things. Like I said, some people say that one was his government name and the other one was his like Instagram name. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what was his, what, what, what? Dude, I was so into this story. Sorry. Like believing every <laughs> single word. But I mean, sort of. I mean, I don't know, it's true, but that Instagram just like, Sorry, the Instagram for <laughs> biblical <laughs> times. Boom. So Azariah, the Hebrew name Azariah means uh, uh, the Lord is my helper. Oh, the Lord is my helper. And then Uzziah is the Lord. Uh, my strength is the Lord. Could you confirm that for me, Clara? How do you spell those names? A Z A R I. His two names actually have different meanings. Azariah means the Lord is my helper or the Lord helps me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Uzziah means my strength is the Lord, or the Lord is my strength. I think that's kind of cool. And like I said, at the end of this episode, I'm gonna explain exactly why the story of Azariah is a perfect example as to why we are to read both of the books. It's gonna make sense in the end, guys. And I think it has a little bit to do with the, the different names as well. Mm. Ooh. The Bible is so cool. Woo! So let's zoom in on Azariah's reign in Judah. I say we switch it up. Let's open the show with some scripture, yeah? We're gonna go to 2 Kings chapter 15, verses one to four. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, JJ II, king of Israel, Azariah, the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 16 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and made offerings on high places. But before we get to the last half of that, we, we saw it, we saw it. They said that he did a good job, okay? Especially the beginning, he had some humble beginnings. And the people of Judah loved him. He reestablished the city of Iloth to Judah, which they had previously lost. He had built up like an, a new army. He built, you know, country morale. He did a really good job. And I wanna take it even further. I wanna examine the goodness that he had, especially in Azariah's first half of his reign. Now we're gonna to go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 26 is a huge highlight reel for King Azariah or Uzziah, okay? We're gonna to go to 2 Chronicles chapter 26 verses four to eight to talk about more of his humble beginnings where he was actually thriving. Verse four, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord according to all that his father, his father Amaziah had done, he set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. He went out and made war against the Philistines and broke through the wall of Gath and the wall of Jabbe, Je, Jabne, and the wall of Ashdod. And he built cities in the territory of Ashdod and elsewhere among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians and lived in Gerbal and against the Munites. Uh, you guys, th these are all very amazing things. The Ammonites paid tribute to Uzziah and his fame spread even to the border of Egypt for he became very strong. High Tanshi. Huh, you guys, not a who, not a what, nothing can get in the way of you and your blessings when God is backing you, baby. Like that is what that means. No matter what, no enemy nation, no enemy sensation, no enemy, no depression, no nothing, no, can stand a chance against the Lord, period. 
ooh, how empowering is that feeling? And that's what it feels like when you read all of those accomplishments. I mean, at this point, Azariah was so high achieving. Dude, this guy became the Steve Jobs of his time. He created a whole new uh, computer software for <laughs> biblical times. No, I mean it, I, you, you, you laugh, but Azariah <laughs> even invented um, new uh, uh, war towers, a new way to battle. Oh. He created ways to uh, uh, um, give armor, soldiers armor to fight. That's why he started getting all these wins because of this, he revolutionized, reindustrialized war. Wow. And I'm telling you, he was major. Here we have Second Chronicles chapter 26, verses 14 to 15. And Uzziah prepared for all the army shields, spears, helmets, coats of mail, bows and stones for slinging. In Jerusalem, he made machines invented by skillful men to be on the towers and the corners to shoot arrows and great stones, and his fame spread far, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Even Egyptians knew about Azariah and everything that he did. Wow. He was on billboards. He got more clout than Rihanna's pregnancy photos. <laughs> is this landing? Do you guys understand what I'm saying here? <gasps> that is where he was. He was el hombre de la hora to the max, a full, okay? And of course, he was feeling himself. But when they feel themselves a little too much, they always fall. They always fall. And Azariah fell. Oh. And this is what happened. Azariah was at a high, and he felt the need to sanctify that, to really solidify this, this time in his life as being a winner. Oh. Pause, I'm gonna pause before I even get to the, to the, to the second act of the story. <laughs> because when he was winning, when he was doing all these things and inventing all this new machinery, revolutionizing, uh, revolutionizing war tactics, Second Chronicles tells us that Azariah or Uzziah, same person, he always consulted the Lord. And when he didn't have the answer, he would pray on it. Lord, give me the answer. Please give me the answer. Mm. And the second he stopped consulting the Lord is when they fall. It's a very common thing. Pride always precedes, immediately precedes falling. We've said this before. So, he clearly didn't consult the Lord because while he's at a high, Azariah goes to a holy temple in Jerusalem and he goes and prepares to light an incense at the holy altar. And I don't know if you're a loyal Bible babe, but if you remember in Leviticus chapter 13 to be exact, we know that only priests can be in there. One, mm. to light an incense on the altar, you need to be a chief priest. Not even, not even every priest can do that. Mm. And y'all, we had a moment, a moment happened. What was he thinking? Because then 80, 81, Priests see that what he's about to do, he doesn't do it yet, but what he's about to do, and actually one of the priests of the 81, his name was Azariah, because the Bible loves to be, <laughs> loves to be uh, compl complicated, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he goes, hey, yo, 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 what are you doing? Are you about to light that incense? Boy, you better drop that thing and leave exit stage left. And then when you do that, you need to repent, because even being in here, the Lord is going to kick your behind. Buddy, just come on down. Bring it on down to Omniville. Uh, Clara has no idea where that's from, but some of you do, okay? That joke was for y'all. But uh, Uzziah, Azariah, gets so angry at the fact that these priests are telling a, a, a king that what he's doing is wrong. He gets so Big angry that the Lord immediately 
upon the anger coming on, the Lord strikes Uzziah with the worst case of leprosy on his forehead. <laughs> Immediately, right there. Let's go to some scripture. Woo! Woo! You guys, I told you it was gonna be bad. So we're gonna <laughs> go to 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verses 19 to 20. Then Uzziah was angry. After the priests were like, mm -hmm, you better repent. Now he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And when he became angry with the priests, leprosy broke out on his forehead in the presence of the priests in the house of the Lord by the altar of incense. And Azariah, or Uzziah, the chief priest and all the priests looked at him and behold, he was leprous in his forehead and they rushed him out quickly and he himself hurried to go out because the Lord had struck him. Pfft. I mean, wow. What, what could we do? Oh, wow. Thank you for Googling I'm leprosy <laughs> that I can see on the screen, Clara. Uh, Ew. <laughs> but also... I was, no, because I was thinking... What? Please, please don't take this wrong. But I was thinking, they keep bringing this like instant leprosy on the Bible. Could it be hives? I was trying to look what leprosy looked like. Could it be like a, a like an extreme hive or something? Like a stressed hive? It's leprosy. Okay. It's leprosy. It is what the text says, babes. Let's not well, you know, at that time they didn't know much about medicine like we do now. Oh, to oh, distinguish. Oh, 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 oh. What do we have? An unbeliever. We have an unbeliever in our mists. It is what it says it is. If it was a hive, it would have said hive. In fact, there is a there's a verse in the Bible. Or rash, me, you know, like. No, no, no. They reference rashes. Oh, okay. They reference, uh, uh, oh, where is it coming? Was it in Ruth? I don't remember. But I know that they reference another skin condition. Okay. They would say skin condition. They okay. say leprosy because of the intensity, the graveness, the sight of it. That's why I was looking at pictures. You know, biblically, when someone has leprosy, they're not even allowed to be in the same household as their family sometimes, let alone be in the in a church. So the second he had the leprosy, the priests were like, oh, forget you. We got to take you out of here. You're <laughs> gross. Yeah. You know, you can't be in here. <laughs> On top of the fact that you couldn't be here, now you have leprosy. Oh. <laughs> you are extremely funny today. I don't. Is uh, that, should I be rushed every single time? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but you're just. I don't know either, Clara. Oh, I don't know. You smell so good. Clara, I will not sleep with you. Stop it. It's on camera. You need to stop. She's courting me, guys. Because I call her my work wife. And I rubbed her head earlier. It's your fault. You, you're giving mixed signals here. No one's giving you mixed signals. No one's giving you mixed signals. Oh, where was I? Where was I? Y'all, I don't even know where to begin to dissect what occurred at that holy temple. But what I do know is that I've, I mean, I've had my moments of pride and arrogance. We've all witnessed it on camera sometimes. <laughs> uh, and I know that whenever I'm in that high, writing in that or operating from that place, I begin screening my mom's calls. I begin swearing a lot more than I would like. I even start to like, I don't know, even the stuff that I wear isn't really like in line with my, my vibe, my style now, it, I, there are other change, like a domino effect, things begin to change when I'm being pr proud. I even think that my eyes look different. I, I present something different. And I think that was what was going on with that anger shift. He went from, he was already really proud, which is why he was there to light the incense for himself. And then the second the priests gave him legal information that applied to him, even that, even if he was a king, he became angry quickly. I think that's, that's kind of an example of when of one of the tentacles of pride is being irritable, mm. thinking like the domino effect is doing things that you otherwise wouldn't do, which is why we shouldn't be using pride as our motivator because it leads to like doing those other things, wearing those things, speaking to people a certain way, ignoring your mom or dad or whatever have you, you know? 
And then another thing I want to dissect here, Clara, is the fact that in the text, nowhere, not in Chronicles, not in Kings, does it say that he lit the incense. He never did. Mm. And yet the Lord punished him because of his intention, because he had everything and he had all intents to light that incense. And then, oh, and then when he got angry at the priests, he was visibly angered and bothered. That was enough to know that you were going to do it. So he, the motivation was punished. His motivation to sin mm. was punished, even though he didn't do it. Mm. I think that's kind of interesting too. That's funny. Well, not funny, but that's like interesting to me because Why? that's something that I'm learning lately. That there's like... At least two, I have spotted types of people. Some people that are focused mainly on the process of things and some people that are focused mainly on the result of things. And I've learned that because I think I'm one of the one of the people that is focused on the process of things. And my boyfriend is one of the people that is like so result fo fo um, focused. driven or, or focused, right? And it's like, I just started realizing, and it's, it's one of these things that none, one or the other is right or wrong. It's just like different points of view on, on the same situation. And one thing that to me is always crucial is the intention. And one thing that for him, it's like what counts or like what, what opens the eyes is the result. Like, mm. I, but did it happen or it, or it didn't? And to me, it's like, I don't care if it happened or not. What was the intention behind? Mm. And yeah, no, that's a really interesting observation on that part of the scene, Clara, because oftentimes we think that, oh, we're kind of absolved of certain offenses because maybe certain things didn't transpire, but I don't know. Like, I think that there is something to be said about your motivation to do something. And if your motivation is inherently mean-spirited, we got to address that. That's not okay. Mm -hmm. What hurt are you going through? What, what are you experiencing? It has to be distance from God. At least for me, I'm a believer, right? So that's how I would process it. But maybe, maybe a sec more secular thought would be, oh, you wanted to cause someone else harm. What issues are you currently going through? How insecure are you? Mm. You know, which is why intent matters, you know? And actually, sometimes people intent isn't even to harm and yet it harms anyways. That's what I was going to say. Not always like that, but sometimes it happens the other way around. Sometimes you hurt somebody, but it's like, but I didn't mean to. It's like, well, you still hurt them. But but that that's what of that's mm. what I'm saying. Like none of us is either right or wrong because when you look at it from the point of view where, oh, you you have the intention of hurting someone, and even though it didn't happen, you still had the intention. But then, when you do hurt someone, but you didn't have the intention, it's like, all right, now I'm focusing on the on the result. You know, like yes, you didn't have the intention, but the pain's still there. Clara. Oh, I can't wait to get to this next discussion, but I'm sorry, but believers got the blueprint. And let me tell you why. Not <laughs> to say that non-believers don't have a blueprint. Maybe you guys have a blueprint. I most certainly thought I had a blueprint when I was an unbeliever, but our blueprint is very simple. If it's not in alignment with what God desires for us, it is no good. Hmm. That's the blueprint. It's as simple as that. So if we are doing something that goes against those commandments, those two, the, the, the two most important ones, love God and only God and treat your neighbor like you would yourself, love your neighbor, love thy neighbor, you know, those two especially, as we know in Matthew, are the most important, then we know we're not doing something right. It's very simple. That's our blueprint. Hmm. That's our blueprint. Anything that deviates from that is not a part of the plan and is going to be judged. Not mm. by us, not by people, but is going to be judged. 
by our father. That's the blueprint. Which brings us to the last part of the, the whole, you know, Azariah, Uzziah story. Azariah ends up dying a leper. He dies with a leprosy until his final days. And his son actually ends up ruling Judah with his dad, Azariah, at the same time. That because he was sick, Azariah was ill. So uh, Jotham and him, either, either it was, he was a part-time king or they ruled together. All we know is that he had leprosy. And like I said, if you have leprosy, you have to be separate from the house. You can't be with, the, with everyone else. So he even died in isolation sort of too, even though he still was king uh, until he died. And he died a leper. Like they refer to him as a leper. And actually in the text, it says that he is a leper not he was a leper. Mm. They use it in the present tense. And I'm just thinking about this now, I, I guess it just came to me, but this is a man that had, you know, like I said, he was the Steve Jobs of his day. He had early humble beginnings of success as a king. And he, it, we forget about it when you have that one thing that stains your entire legacy. Clara, we got that story out of the way. I think it's about time we talk about it. Let's give the people what they came here for. Mm. What's the difference between someone who exhibits attributes of confidence and someone who is just plain old arrogant, like Azariah, Uzziah? I think I have the response. Hit me. And I think you just said the response. Like you just said it not long ago. What you said was rule number two of uh, Christians, Bible, whatever. Mm -hmm. Treat your neighbor or your brother as... Love thy neighbor, treat your neighbor like you would yourself. Exactly. I think that's the answer to it. One thing is being confident and not doubting yourself and, and trusting in your potential capabilities. But then when you cross the line and you use that to harm other people or to not see how, you know, that can affect other people, that's when it becomes arrogant. When you go first and, like, the means justify the... What was it? How, ¿Cómo se dice eso? I have no idea, babe. Machiavello. Machiavelli? Machiavel. Yeah. Machiavellian? Yeah, like, the means justify the end or something like oh, that okay. so basically when you lose wait it's gonna bother me can you look that up Machiavelli, my so. like neurosis is flinching well while you look that up uh i transmute that through a through like a this is a christian show so i and also that's just how i understand it is it's okay if when i understand that my gifts that are specifically made for me, that I possess, no one else has this gift. I am appreciative of these gifts because I know that they were given to me directly from the Lord. If your understanding of these gifts come from a place of gratitude, appreciation, um, those two things mainly. I think that's confidence. I also think that it's really confident to understand, uh, confident to admit when you don't know something, to admit your faults and your flaws. I think that's really confident. Mm -hmm. When I see some, when I see a man say like, just like be okay with being, sounding silly or sounding stupid or like, you know what I mean? I think that that takes confidence, mm -hmm. you know? So that's how I define confidence. Now, the reason why I really know that that is confidence is because arrogance is when you view these gifts, which may very well be there, may very well be true, but you view these gifts in a way that allows you to be uh, uh, malicious towards other people. You view yourself as superior to other people. You view yourself as more important than other people because you have these gifts and have acquired such things. That is arrogance. A confident person doesn't, doesn't exhibit those traits. 
You can be confident and have the world and have abundance and have prosperity and not be that way, not be self-indulgent, mm. not be, not have the superiority complex. A confident person doesn't need to bring others down. An arrogant person needs to prove that he's above everyone. Mm, bingo. Bingo. You nailed it right there. And what I was looking up is the end justifies the means. That's what Machiavelli said. Ah. The end who was Machiavelli? Niccolo Machiavelli. He was a huge, um, I think he was like a, a, a war person. Como se llama? Un, un captain. No, como se llama? Un, a general? I think, I think he was, yeah. Could you give us, could you give the Bible babes a brief little... Niccolo Machiavelli was an Italian... Oh, actually, no. Shit. Hit us, hit us. Let us know, because I know some of the Bible babes are interested. Italian diplomat, author, philosopher, and historian who lived during their Renaissance times. Best, oh, wow. Oh, he was like, that's the thing. He was, no, he was best known for his political trees, tree, treason. Tre, no, treaty... Oh, joder. <laughs> I go straight to treason. No. He was a philosopher who Treat was naughty. <laughs> Treaties? Treaties. Treaties? Treaties. What is that? Like mean? he wrote like uh, laws or. Okay, yeah. Written about. Like a constitution. Okay. So he's best known for that, written about 1530. And he has often been called the father of po political philosophy and political science. But. Um, mm -hmm. Ah, uh, you see? Yes. For many years, he served as a senior official of the Florentine Republic with responsibilities in diplomatic and military uh, affairs. Because he was very well known. Like, that's a quote of him, the end justifies the means, and that's, that was, like, his motto. And it was, like, basically, that's what it meant. Like, hmm. he, he, that was his, like, military st strategy slash philosophy, life philosophy. Like, wow. So he would be standing I for... Like, if you have to kill someone because you have to, you know, do whatever you got to do. I've heard a lot of people say, like, Machiavellian yeah. philosophy or a Machiavellian point of view. Yeah. Or, I've heard it or, being Oh, said that's before. so Machiavellian or something yes, like that. Yes, yes. That's what it means, that the end justifies the means. Hmm. Well, you learn something new every day. Ding. The more you know. Okay. Um... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Bria. ya. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy. Do you think that Stevie Wonder's blind? Um, the Machiavelli this, Machiavelli that. Whatever. <laughs> to bring it back to the story, Uzziah exhibited more confidence in the first half of his reign when he would consult with the Lord and consult with his people. And, you know, he was building technologies that was for the betterment of the whole of the people, of the public. What a confident, mm. he, he, per, he displayed acts of confidence in that time. With age though, he became more proud. You know, it, it was less, less uh, motivated by the people, by God. He was more motivated by himself and um, proved to be arrogant. So there's a flip there. That's the difference between confident and arrogant. I want to do the opposite. The, the older I get, I want to be more confident. Mm. I want to be more confident in the Lord. Moral of the story is, arrogance isn't holy, period. No matter how often you see people flexing on social media, in music, in movies, listen, that ish ain't real life. When we honor our arrogance, instead of letting our confidence be rooted in the Lord, rooted in something more important, our fall is almost inevitable. I mean, look what happened when the Lord struck Azariah, aka Uzziah, <laughs> with leprosy. He was so proud of all of his recent achievements that he tried to light an incense to himself in a holy temple. Not only was it a sin for him to be in there, It was a super duper sin for him to even think about lighting an incense on the altar of a holy temple, the audacity, the arrogance. But the Lord is always 10 steps ahead. Our father doesn't even give him the chance to light the incense. He punishes him before he even gets the chance. Hmm. Now, 
If it's one thing that the Lord is, aside from being holy, faithful, and efficient, it's that he is merciful. Even in dishing out Azariah's punishment, he doesn't kill him. And he even allows him to continue ruling alongside his son, Jotham, leprosy and all. Babes, God's promises for us are absolute. And there are no exceptions to the swiftness of his word. So even if you think you're flying high and can't be touched, even if you think God isn't being attentive this season, or that it'll be fine, you'll change next week, rest assured, your lesson is going to come in due time. If we submit our will and our innermost desires to God, he can use them for his purpose and grant you blessings beyond your wildest imagination. In any case, just don't get caught on the wrong side of his word. You heard? <gasps> Ooh! Ooh, hey, Father! How'd I do? Oh, I'm so glad. So, what'd you get me for my birthday? Yeah, yeah, I know you gave me the gift of life. Yes, I understand, Father God. Yeah, okay. I'm fine. Thank you. I'm very happy that I will catch you next week, guys. Mm -hmm.